The oldest nuclear power plant is scheduled to start shutting down on Friday evening. But ahead of that, Greenpeace activists who staged a different protest at a different nuclear facility have been arrested. They protested at the Tricastin plant, which is now nearly 40 years old. The activists say its age makes it unsafe. Meanwhile, the Fessenheim plant will begin the decommissioning process as part of France's push to use less nuclear power. The plan will unfold over decades, with the goal being to reduce reliance on nuclear to 50% of the total grid. Opponents say the Fessenheim shutdown will lead to more than 2,000 local job losses. Well, let's speak to Peter Fraser, who is the head of the International Energy Agency's Gas, Coal and Power Marketing Division. Thank you very much for speaking to us here on Euronews. We're hearing there the concerns of activists to try and shelve nuclear power, but it is a low carbon emission source of energy. So if we were to shut down all of the nuclear power plants, how would that impact the fight that people are trying to mount against climate change? Well, that, that's certainly an area of concern to the IEA. In, in the European Union, nuclear accounts for is the largest source of low carbon electricity and accounts for about 25% of the electricity produced. It's, uh, it's twice as big as wind, for example. Uh, last year, the IEA did a study called Nuclear Power in a Clean Energy System, where we looked at just at the question that you asked. And we asked ourselves, if people stopped investing in nuclear power in the advanced economies, including in the EU, how would that affect uh, emissions? How would that affect costs? And in the study, look, when we looked at the EU, we, we, we saw that the nuclear, most of the nuclear plants, about five, six of them, would, have to, would end up closing by the year 2040. And that would have an impact both on the cost of, of power, make it more expensive, and would also increase CO2 emissions in the European Union by 100 million tons. That's quite significant. So what alternative plans do European countries have then if they are to get rid of nuclear power? Well, it's, there's no question that, that renewables are going to be the top low carbon source or, or individual renewables, such as wind power. It's going to become the top low carbon source, perhaps as soon as five years from now. And in particular, offshore wind power has a very bright future in Europe, and we see it becoming a, a top uh, source of new electricity. So we, we expect that there will be very strong investment in renewable sources, uh, both to replace nuclear power, but of course to decar help to decarbonize the, the power system as a whole. And we think that's going to be very important, but we think hanging on to the nuclear power that you have is also very important. Not renewables or nuclear, but renewables and nuclear. And getting rid of these plants is a long and tedious process. I mean, looking at the UK and the Sellafield project that's going on there, that's been going on for absolutely years now. How long do you estimate it would take for somewhere like Fessenheim to completely shut down and get rid of all of its nuclear waste? Well, uh, all nuclear plants, when they close, have a plan which takes some decades for, for, the, for the site to be returned to a normal state. It's not, uh, it's a, more of an area of specialty of our, of our colleagues in the Nuclear Energy Agency uh, who are specialized in this kind of technology. Thanks very much for speaking to us. That was Peter Fraser there, joining us from the International Energy Agency.